Here we've got our premium underbonnet insulation. This material is 100% black. It's a peel and stick solution and it's around 5.5 millimeters thick. What we've got here is a fairly late model car which is fitted with a pressed composite style board. So most vehicles come fitted with this. And what tends to happen over the duration of the vehicle's life is that these deteriorate and wear down and start to crumble. Similar to this one we've got here where you can see it's starting to let go. And unfortunately there's not much you can do. You can't reface these. Usually if you go to the manufacturer to purchase a new one, you're looking around the $500 mark. Once you get sort of over 20 years old, they no longer produce them as spare parts and you're kind of stuck. So we've been searching for a while to come up with a solution that's gonna work for guys, particularly guys with vehicles, more exotic vehicles, high-end vehicles, some of the European stuff, the guys are chasing a certain look. The unique thing with this material is it's super durable. We can put a pressure washer on this at point blank and it won't pull it apart. The material shows next to no creasing, which we're gonna put it on this bonnet here and we're gonna give you a demonstration of what we can achieve with it. So it's oversized, the sheet comes at one meter by 1.5, which is big enough for most bonnets. As you can see here, the size of this bonnet, we're gonna use probably only two thirds of the sheet. So an easy way to install your underbonnet insulation is remove your bonnet from the car. So quick tip for you, before you undo your bolts, our panel's already aligned, get some tape and just mark out where your bonnet's currently sitting. So we're gonna pick this top edge and then we'll just choose an edge down here. Now when we go to bolt the bonnet back on, all we need to do is aim for that and the gapping will be spot on. So we're taking our bonnet off the car, it's just gonna make things much easier to work on. We've got our, uh, a couple of levers here which are out of our trim removal kit, which make things much easier. So we're just gonna get these clips out. Easy way is just to get under them with a lever and then you can just pop them out. So we've got our clips removed. Now, we'll have a look what's underneath this. You can see this board, it's probably around three millimeters thick and then it's got some padding in these areas here. So we're gonna take this off and we're gonna use this one as a template. You can see the hood's pretty clean under here, but what we're gonna do is get some wax and grease remover and a clean rag and wipe this down. So our peel and stick backing's gonna to stick to it. We'll get our sheet, which is oversized. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You could simply trace that on there and then attempt to stick it down. But what you're most likely gonna find is you'll stick it down on this side and then by the time you push it in, it's gonna pull up short and if you don't get it right, it's gonna be skew and you're gonna to get to the end and be pulling your hair out. So rather than that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose, say this straight edge, which I'm choosing this straight edge and I'm working out the old one went here so it finished there. So what I plan to do is make sure it's oversized every which way. Choose that as a nice straight edge. I'm gonna peel some of the backing out here and tack that down. That's gonna allow me then to fold up these edges, relieve some more, get it close to here, and then use this as a template. Trace a line on here and I'm gonna use chalk because it'll come off. And then we can cut a nice shape with scissors and then just roll it down and we can just do it in portions. This side, maybe half of this and then work around and we'll get a nice finish exactly to the line where this was. So what I'm gonna do first is, this was our straight edge that's gonna be our datum edge and we just wanna stick the middle down. So what I'm gonna do is simply take out that bit of adhesive there, which you can see. I'll cut that out and we'll just tack that down. That gives us a datum, point of reference that we're stuck to and the rest of it will just slowly work out. So what's gonna come in handy is an application roller here. You see, I've contacted this area down, but to push it down, you can either rub with your hand, or you find you can use this wheel or the timber handle, but you can just push it down. These concave shape here really come in handy, that we can just work this down. Now I've only relieved this much 
adhesive at the moment. So we can just push it down and form it in. And you see, because this material doesn't have a weave, that it'll, it'll conform and shape to everything that's under there. So what we're trying to achieve is to roll this in like a valley, not stretch it over and try and push it down. So we're letting the material shrink and form in. So you can see our adhesive is stuck to around here. Now we've got the ability to lift this up and work at this area down here. So what I might actually do is get it stuck down through the centre. So we've got a point here and then we can start cutting this out. See down in here, we've stuck down and we actually want to push the material down. So if you slowly work this adhesive, just slowly pull it off, you've got a chance to get it off. You see there where it's starting to come away? Even if you grab a knife and just help the adhesive off, you'll get it off before you've rubbed it down. Once you've rubbed it down and the adhesive's bitten in, you've got no chance of getting this off. So in this early stage there. I really want to try and get it deep into this valley here. You can see this just slowly applying pressure. We'll just get that off. Now I'm going to get my hand in under here and roll it right into that valley. So you can see there, just slowly keep working it. Now I'm a bit hesitant to stick this bit down yet because we want to end up with a finished trim line here. So I'm just going to keep my eye on him and keep working in under this side. We've still got plastic on around here. Probably at a stage now where I could what I'm going to do here is stick a bit of plastic back on. So I'm going to keep in mind with this plastic is one side has a release on it, one side doesn't. Your challenge is to find which side of it. Easy way to do it, rather than just stick it on, is just stick a corner on. Have a look. That side, see that's got a release on it. If I stick this other side on, it doesn't want to come off. So now I know that's the sticky side, the, the release agent side. I can stick that on there. Can flip this over, keep working, and that'll easy peel off later. What I'm going to do is we're going to trace this line here on where we think the material sits. So if we push this material down here. We can start marking these lines. So I've just got a white paint marker. We're going to pick up this tangent here. And we're going to cut away that plastic in there. That's going to allow us to feed the material in. So it's going to pull up short in here. And then we're stuck down to that point. Once we've got that stuck down, we can put our old bonnet liner over it, trace it around. Then we've just got this small lip here that we lift up and we can cut a nice line on it. So to pick up that line, I'm just going to push it in mark a couple of points another one here another one there chase this around this corner
so now we've got that we can join those dots and then we can cut out all this plastic in here stick that down then we've got our edge that we can cut and get a nice edge and then just stick down So now we've got this stuck down. You can see it's stuck down just to the perimeter. It's about 20 mil shy of where we want to be. So what we'll do is put the old template over the top of it. Get that positioned where you're happy with it. Then just get a piece of chalk. Take it off, and then just check that you're happy with where it's drawn. What I'm going to do is cut on the outside of this chalk line, just to give it a little bit extra tolerance. And feeling under here, I'm probably going to move this line. Now this is an easy one because it's fairly straight. We can feel there's a divot around there and the other one starts about there. So I'm just going to realign this one. Push it down a little bit. much easier to cut it longer and then cut it back shorter than cut it short once. So just get some sharp scissors. So we've trimmed the perimeter now. You can see our chalk marks here. That was our first one and second one. Don't worry about these too much. That stuff, a bit of air gun, you'll be able to blow that off. We've still got plastic border around it. Where we've cut it though, there's a bunch of fibers. So we're just gonna wipe around the perimeter before we take the last bit of backing off and stick it down. So to make sure it's stuck down, you want to use a roller and apply pressure. What your goal is here is to compress the fibres enough to get the adhesive to contact. So if you go over all the flat areas and then all the negative spaces with the domed end here, push it all in until it's contacted. What you might find is because you've rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed this, you might find that these fibres start to ball up. A good little trick here though to finish it off is just get a heat gun and on low heat, just come in and singe the top of those fibres. So you can do that around the edges where you see it looks a little bit furry. Just come in and just melt them over. So we've got our bonnet back on. And as you can see here, the peel and stick under bonnet stuck on. It looks factory. For an aftermarket one, I haven't seen anything as good as this. If you stand back and have a look at it, 
you can't tell the difference. So even over all these reinforcement panels where the materials had to shrink and gather, there's no buckle, there's no puckers, there's no buckles. And by us waving the heat gun over it at the end, it's just crystallised the top layer of that material, even where the cut edge is, you can't even tell we cut it with scissors.